So you've got this property which could represent one of multiple completely different values. Now how do you model this in your domain model explicitly? Here is one elegant approach. Suppose we want to read these key value pairs from a spreadsheet. Each value could have one of the following three cases. It could be empty, it could have a concrete ID, it could have an ID with a wildcard. When implementing these cases in our domain model, we want to represent all valid cases explicitly and ensure that invalid cases are almost impossible. This way we try to avoid bugs by design and ensure that the design is self-documenting. So how do we do this? In functional programming languages like f -sharp, this would be pretty easy. Multiple exclusive cases are represented with OR types called discriminated unions, which looks like this. We define a type called cell value, which is of three cases. Number one, the ID, which on its turn is of a type tuple with three parts, the number of type int and the kind of type string and the version again of type int. The second case we call wildcard ID, which is also a tuple with number and kind. And finally, the last case we call empty cell which has no value at all. In object-oriented programming languages like c -sharp, we could use inheritance. We would define a class called cellValue and we would derive the three cases from it. Case number one would be the ID, which would have three properties, public int number, public string kind, and public int version. We would do the same with the wildcard ID, which is the second case. This one would not have the version. And the last one we would call empty cell, which has no properties at all. Now the question would be, how do we work with those types? Let's say we want to print those to the console. So we create here a new method, private void print, we accept the cell value, and now have to handle all the cases explicitly. We can use the c -sharp pattern matching for this. Value is id. Then we could print it like this, console, right line, and we print the id.number, and then the kind, and finally the version. Now we repeat this for all the other cases. We have the wildcard ID. Here we print only the number and the kind and the wildcard again. And then we have empty cell. which we print as empty. And of course, we also have to handle the default case. Now we have to decide whether we ignore this case or throw a not supported exception to make clear that we are not supporting this case. Unknown cell value. Value get type. Let's add another example. Let's assume we want to resolve the wildcard ID to some concrete ID. So we add another method, private ID resolve. We accept again the cell value and now again have to handle all the different cases. So let's copy this code. If we already have a concrete ID, we can just return it. If we have a wildcard, we would resolve it, let's say with some additional function we get passed here, func, we get in a wildcard ID and it returns an ID, of course we have to return the value, in case of the empty cell just return null. Of course, this is not a very nice design, but it should be sufficient for this example. At least, let's rename this function to try resolve. 
Now this design has two smells. Obviously, we have quite some code duplication. We have this huge if else block and two functions now. And let's assume we now have to introduce a fourth type, which is free text. How would we introduce it in our code base? We would have to grab through the whole code base, find all these if then else blocks and explicitly handle this new case. So how can we improve our design to address both smells? In f -sharp we would use pattern matching to work with the union types, which is much more concise, so code duplication is not much of an issue here. And if we would now introduce a fourth type here, like free text of string, the compiler would tell us immediately that we haven't implemented the match expression completely and that we are missing this new case. So introducing a new case of a union type in an f -sharp based code base is pretty simple. Just introduce it, fix all the compiler errors, and we are done. Now let's check whether we can improve the design of the c -sharp implementation in a similar way. Let's start with the print example. If we abstract from this concrete example, we see this is a function which takes one value and doesn't return anything. So let's call it match. And as this is a member, we don't have to take any value here. We just match on this. And now the code which should be executed in the particular cases, we accept through functions. So let's put here an action which takes an ID, on ID, an action which takes an wildcard ID, on wildcard ID, and an action on empty cell on empty. So let's use those functions on ID. We pass the ID. On wildcard, we pass the wildcard ID. And here we put the empty cell. And here we have to replace it with this as well. Now in all cases when we want to work with the cell value class and we just want to perform some action and don't want to return any value, we can use this match function instead. We can reuse this huge if else block and handle the not supported case, the default case centrally. So let's improve the print function. So we would do here instead the following value match and now we say for ID, we just do this, wildcard, tag this one, and for empty, the empty part, the rest of the code we can remove, and we're done. The code duplication is removed. Now let's apply the same concept to the second example, the try resolve function. This time we return a value. So let's copy our match function here. And we call it select to use a similar naming convention like link queue. So here we return a type. And of course we have to change the actions to a function which returns a type. Let's do this for all the cases. Of course, we have to return the value now. Again, in all cases. And now let's use this in our resolve function. So we say value select. In case we have an ID, we just return the ID. In case we have a wildcard, we call the resolve function and in case of empty we return null and we have to return the overall value as well. Pretty concise and all the code duplication is removed. Now we could, of course, add further link queue like higher order functions here, for example, a where method. If we now want to introduce a new case, we do not have to search through the entire code base because all the if then else blocks are pretty much encapsulated in the design itself in the base class. So let's add this case. We call it free text, public string text 
and we now change the implementation of our match and select function. So there's another case we have to handle, action free text on text. We improve our if else block handle here free text as well. Okay, and the same we have to do for the select function. We take free text and we call it on text. And again, we have to handle the case. On text, text. Okay, and now what happens, the compiler complains that we are not passing a function for the fourth case. So we would just compile our code base, fix all the compile errors, and then we are done with adding a new case in a safe way. So let's add the text here. Maybe we just print it. And in this case, to keep it simple, let's handle it in the same way as the empty case. And we're done. In functional programming, there's one specific OR type which is used excessively as it represents the absence of a value, the option type. As this is not available in C-sharp, here we have to deal with null and null reference exceptions, I have provided an example implementation on GitHub. The link is in the description below the video. The design I have presented today might not feel intuitive to you initially if you are used to think in object-oriented concepts, but applying these functional programming concepts really adds benefits. See you in the next video.